solve a problem like an older reader who is struggling? What do you do with a child who is not very good at reading and is resistant? This is a problem that many of us face as parents or teachers of middle school students, of high school students, maybe even adult older readers. Well, my guest today, Tammy from Phonic Books, is a pro at drawing out the older reader, and she's got some secrets to share with you. I'm so excited to invite her onto our show today. Welcome, Tammy. Hi, everybody. We're glad to have you here. And I know people are going to be commenting and saying they're excited to hear about this topic, right? This topic, how to engage a struggling reader. And a lot of that has to do with our book choices, which may not be the way you would typically think about it. So we need to hear uh, Tammy's ideas about this. Um, but we're going to be showcasing some of Tammy and her colleagues' beautiful books that do draw out the struggling reader. So. I look forward to that. So, but in the meantime, Tammy, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be doing this work. Well, um, I came to teaching quite late, around mm. around the age of thirty, oh. having done lots of other jobs and travelled, and as you would, some years ago before COVID, <laughs> and um, then um, decided to go into teaching and was a class teacher in an inner city school in London, which is usually quite varied community, very uh, multi-ethnic, quite diverse. And um, having done my teacher training at Goldsmith, which is one of the best places in London, I soon realized I had no idea whatsoever how to teach reading. Uh, what's worse, I didn't know how to, to help the struggling readers in my class. Mm -hmm. And I was very aware of that, that the kids would go out to their special needs class and come back and no progress was made at all and they'd simply move on to the next year mm -hmm. so I always knew that something was lacking in my skill set when I was a class teacher um, fast forward and I had two kids and one of them my eldest uh, Adam um, was struggling to learn to read mm -hmm. I think you often find in special needs teachers or dyslexia teachers mm -hmm. someone they're close to mm -hmm. struggle with reading and they've decided to make it their business to find out how to help kids. So I did a dyslexia training. And after that, I also trained in linguistic phonics, phonographics, mm -hmm. uh, and ended up working in a dyslexia center in London. Um, at the dyslexia center, we were getting a lot of kids who were very disaffected because, of course, most of them, by the time they get assessed, and by the time they come to get help, they've already experienced a number of years of failure. Yeah. So we found that the books, although we had a very good phonics, linguistic phonics program we were using, the books we were using were either not age appropriate, which really hit their self-esteem because they were given books to read that their siblings were reading in kindergarten, <laughs> um, or that they weren't structured enough because we know that every good remedial teacher knows that the structure is the really core of what you're doing. You have to make it step by step and make totally. sure that you have to fill in the missing gaps because these kids have gaps either because they didn't listen or because they haven't had enough practice or because they've shut down um, emotionally to, to mm -hmm. learning to read. Mm -hmm. So um, we set about creating our own decodable books. And of course, most remedial teachers are gonna write their own decodable stories for every lesson. <laughs> we do this all the time and we're real pro at it. I'm sure everybody on Who's this- Who's done that? Who's done that here? Does that all the time and we just, got together with Wendy Tweedy, who's one of my colleagues, and Claire um, Wilson. Uh, and we said, well, why don't we make our own? And so we published them. Um, we were very aware from the very beginning that we wanted structure mm -hmm. and engagement, mm -hmm. two things. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure that this time around, the kids would learn and wouldn't have missing bits, right. but also that we'd get them onto the road to reading and they become to see themselves as reader and start right. thinking that reading isn't for them. Mm -hmm. so that's really how we got into all uh, to, to this, uh, to making phonic books, which is the, the name of our company. Yeah, and she's gonna get to show you some of these. You're gonna love them, they're beautiful. And what I love about what she's saying is it's not just about getting um, older children something that, that might be interesting to them, but it's actually also about the instruction, the structure of what we're giving them, they need to catch up, right? And we need to give them something specifically tied to what their current 
decoding needs are many times. And so they've married the two very well. And by the way, Phonic Books, this whole series, there's a slew of resources. They align so well with Reading Simplified. So those of you who are following Reading Simplified, they will map on really well to what you're already doing. Um, Tammy mentioned it's a linguistics phonics program. I often talk about it as a sound-based decoding program. Either way, we're still developing the names for this and that we uh, all over the world can um, kind of come together to see that this is a really effective approach to teaching reading when we focus on the sounds first. So I love that you're going, that you had that mission and that you've created so many beautiful things there for all ages. They're not just for um, the older readers, but so anyway, we're going to showcase them to, today, and she's going to talk about how the the books themselves can engage and rescue the readers. Do you have any, um, maybe I should just let you get into uh, talking about these books. Is that a good idea? Yeah, sure. I mean, first, I just wanted to mention that there is a different, a lot of remedial teachers or teachers who are okay, intervention teachers need, um, are, are looking for high-low reading books. But what we do is not just high-low, which is basically a low reading level, but high content or high interest level. Mm. What we do is high uh, interest decodable books, which means it's not just getting fluency at a remaining stable level. It's trying to get the children to learn more so they progress and their phonic knowledge grows by the time they finish the end of the series. Mm -hmm. This is really important because they need to make progress. They can't be staying where they're at. So just mm -hmm. giving them books to read, which is great to develop fluency is fine, but they're not going to find the next level up mm -hmm. by reading the same easy text, even though the, in, the, the content is interesting and exciting. Mm -hmm. So we want to combine the two. We want to combine our reading instruction, our stair step progression with engagement. So and that's what we're trying to do. That is a great take, take home, you guys. Can you tweet that or put that in your comment? That's the one of the secrets that's really uh, important about Tammy's talk today. So I'm excited to get her to show that to you. Okay, so here we go. So um, those are just a, a selection of the books we have. And today I'm gonna concentrate more on the older readers because in a way that's kind of more unique. Many people, many publishers publish decodable, fun, decodable books, exciting, colorful for young readers, but very few publishers have thought about how you address the older reader and re-engage them. At the same time, putting in your expertise as an expert reading instruction specialist. Um, and so you can link it to any phonics program that you are uh, teaching. And as it happens, uh, we, we share a great deal with Marnie's method so you should be able to use our books alongside of any phonics program that you're using. Mm -hmm. So um, let's start at the very beginning. Our, our earliest series is called Moon Dogs, and this Moon Dog series actually starts with the assumption that some kids need to start at the very beginning. And we are talking about learning the sounds of the alphabet. We're not even talking about reading CBC words. And if you go on to the next slide, um, you can see they, um, that's a bit small, but if you see that the progression literally introduces the sounds of the alphabet as though the kids were in kindergarten. With the first book introducing five sounds, the next book introducing three more sounds, the next book after that introducing four more sounds. Um, and this is a cumulative progression. Now, when the kids, uh, with these kids, these struggling readers come to us, we need to teach them in a cumulative way because we don't want them to forget what we've just taught them. Therefore, we need to include everything uh, that has come before. Um, and this is what these books do. So if you look at our book, at the, the, the book seven or eight, they will include all the sounds of the alphabet in the previous books. And this is really important. We also wanted to make the images fun and engaging. So you can see it's kind of slightly manga style, slightly humorous, uh, but you can see the level of the text is CVC reading, words like big and bat, and um, it is kindergarten level reading. But the illustration is amusing and engaging and not demeaning to readers who are older and who are struggling. So let's look at a few more of those. You can see here's another example of uh, 
a CVC level text. As you can see, we try and be diverse. So we have characters of different colors and we have, a, we have a disabled character. Really important to bring that in now. We realize as teachers, we need to put everybody in our books. And so we've made an effort, we've, we've made a point of include of having very inclusive mm -hmm. uh, images and characters. Also, one of the nice things is the characters are, uh, are, are revisited. Sometimes one of the frustrating things you have in phonic uh, readers is that uh, because you're doing uh, Pip, then you'll have one character called Pip and the next book will be a character called Ned and the, the, the character after that will be something else. We actually use our characters as they re return to the stories and um, that's really nice because the kids can get, get get attached to them and it's more meaningful as a reading experience. Mm -hmm. um, so there we have another CVC book um, and we continue, you can see our, now we, we can see the structure is more difficult. It's C, C, V, C, consonant, consonant, vowel, consonant. So now you can see how your teaching uh, is, beginning, is beginning to uh, progress with the reader. Now this would go very well with Marnie's Switch It activity. Uh, mm -hmm. when you actually are um, trying to get uh, consonant um, consonant blends to swap places. Yeah. So this kind of book would match very, very well with uh, with your switch it activity, I think, Marnie. And everyone who might be on a phone might not be able to read this, but so far we've seen text that's very, very short and CVC level. So set one included uh, text like Ned is on the van, get off Ned. And then this one, as Tammy's pointing out, is CCVC is Ned is not glad, he is fat and glum. So you've got a mixture of short vowels and then also those consonant clusters or um, consonant blends. So go ahead. So here we go, uh, continuing in. We've done our teaching, we've done our word building, all of our switch it, what, whatever we need to do for that child. And now we're moving on to our first uh, consonant digraph, shh, and you have a text with that. You can see there's slightly more text. Uh, as you notice with the words glum or words damp or words, some kids, particularly those who might have low language, will need to uh, to learn these words too. What does glum mean? It's not a usual word that you that you use, but actually it's a good opportunity to expose kids to words that they can decode and expand their vocab vocabulary at the same time. So that's an example. You can see the images are cool and they're fun and we have an array of characters, which is very inclusive, which, which we think is, is great. Mm -hmm. uh, and also we find if you, if you go to the next slide that um, we always have games in, in the back of each book and that's great to engage uh, I love that. disaffected children because you always have something to play uh, and make it more fun mm -hmm. um, as you read. Now, as you saw, the, you see the, um, the text is only six pages long because the whole idea is to read it in one sitting, in one short lesson, uh, and to make sure the children succeed. So you have to do all the preparation before in all your intervention mm -hmm. skills, and then you sit down for a short read uh, and then play the game. And that is a very nice short activity. And we're talking about real struggling readers who are at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I love it. That is so motivating and it's so helpful for the teacher just to have it right there in the book and you don't have to uh, reproduce it and you just and it's uh, a natural transition. And uh, Rachel says her 2T loves the games. I believe it. And Nan says, love the idea of a game at the end. Yes. And this game is tied to the content that you're teaching. That's so, so important. It's, it's not just haphazard. These sounds are going to be the same that are in the book. Yeah. So, for example, this game that you're looking at right now is from the first book and you'll be able immediately to see that it focuses on the first five sounds at -im, and it's single letters and cvc words and and vc words um but it really consolidates the content of that book so it's just more practice of what you've been teaching anyway mm -hmm. so um going further up um most of the older struggling readers really struggle with vowel teams uh, and they find it difficult to remember them. And then when they come to alternative spellings of the long vowels, they get very, very confused. So as we know, we have to teach things in a very systematic way. Um, and often they can't handle too many alternatives. 
So this next set, which is the Moondog set three, only introduces two alternatives. And if you go down, you can see, for example, the two alternatives for the long vowel A, AI and AY. And that will be inside a uh, cover of the book to show you what the content of what you're teaching would need to be. Mm -hmm. So um, often I use this series of books before I start to expand the number of alternatives. So I might use this in tandem with other series that have more alternatives, but first we just start with two and then we introduce three or four and then we can read a book with more spelling alternatives for the um, long vowel A. So uh, this shows you the inside the back of each, the back cover of each book, you will see the phonic progression, the actual sequence of it. So you'll see that the first book is A, I and A, Y, long vowel A. The next one will be E, E and E, A for the long vowel E and O, A, O, W for long vowel O and then er and then E, etc. So it's very, very clear by opening the back cover of the book what what is in this series, not only what is in this book, and it gives you a great uh, sense of this is what I need to teach for a successful reading experience. So this uh, is the, sorry? No, go ahead. So this is the the, the, the vowel spellings um, series, Moon Dogs 3. And um, as you can see, the characters are quite cool. Uh, it's about a band of kids who all play instruments. And we wanted very much to have a positive message um, for kids that they can relate to. Um, also done the kind of manga sort of cool style. Yeah, and this aligns really well with Reading Simplified. Notice these are sound-based choices, the A sound, and then different spellings that match on to that instead of let's just do A-Y one day and A-I another day and E-R another day. So those of you who are using Reading Simplified with our pathway, the order is slightly different for phonic books, but it's not that big of a deal. You just can read these books, you know, at a different timing, and, um, and but still get that principle of one sound, multiple spellings. And Jennifer asks, is there a teacher's instruction book? What we have is a workbook, and I'll show them to you later. Mm -hmm. And the workbooks are very uh, self-explanatory. Every activity is very easy to understand. And in fact, you'll find that many of the activities will be very similar to what Marnie does. So for example, we ha also have a switch it activity. We also have a sorting activity that Marnie uh, teaches in her program because fundamentally we come up from the same uh, philosophy of teaching, from the same um, from the same outlook on how important it is to go from sound to spelling and also slowly build up alternative spellings. Uh, um, and that really is um, what we share. So anyway, here is the, for example, example of the long vowel A book. And you will see immediately that it has a word with A Y in it and a couple of words with A I in it. And we believe it's really important for kids to see more than one alternative in a text because from the very life, beginning, from the very beginning. Yeah, they ne in real life, they're never going to see a text with just one spelling. Uh, of a long vowel because just that's not how our phonic uh, our alphabetic wo uh, code works. Our alphabetic one is very complicated and it has numerous spellings of the same uh, vowel sound. So um, it's really important to actually have them together in one text. Mm -hmm. So uh, here, for example, is um, you can see the long vowel E, and if you look at the text closely, you can see leaves and the word uh, three weeks keep, um, the two alternatives embedded in the text and a fun story about a lost dog that is found and um, is claimed by this girl. Also, you might notice that there's AI in it and AI was from the previous book. So by this time, they should be able to read the word claimed and uh, another note notice there's another little trick there they put in the eh in vet 
which is not the E sound, but it gives the chance the, for the children to, to practice their cognitive flexibility with trying one sound or, and if it doesn't work, try another. What we call here in uh, Everything Simplified, the Flexit strategy, it's the second most important decoding strategy we teach. And we don't wanna hide this variation from children. We want to kind of challenge them pretty early on to realize that that's our, that's our code. It's tricky folks. So try one sound. If it doesn't work, try another. <laughs> and uh, instead of guarding them so carefully that they never see that um, overlap in sound possibility, then they are lost when they move on to real text. So this is much more like real text, even though it's controlled and it's a guided um, control uh, to get them to be more prepared for authentic text. So um, here's another glass example for the long vowel O. You can see the word throws, O-W, and soaking, and boat, which is O-A. Same principle. See that the different alternatives within the text, but very controlled, very limited. So it's a short and successful experience for the kids. The book is only six pages long, but then you have all the other activities, either from Marnie's, act, Marnie's program or from our workbooks, and we'll show that to you a little bit later, which will give you comprehension activities so the children have multiple multiple exposures to the text with these two vowel spellings. Mm -hmm. And people are asking for where to order them from. So, um, Well, um, we have an American website now, which is www.phonicbooks.com, and these books are available on that uh, website and Marnie uh, there's a special code that Marnie will give you and I'll, I'll give you at the end where you will get a special discount this is only um, applicable to the uh, reading simplified uh, community mm -hmm. um, and uh, you'll have the details at the end and also Marnie I think will uh, will put the details up mm -hmm. that's oh, it that's cool that's cool thank you okay so so we're moving on now to talk about our series. So up until now, the books could really be read in any order. Uh, although, of course, having said that, they need to be the, the beginner books need to be cumulative, so they actually need to be read in the right order. But these ones are actually a whole series. And the beauty of these books is that it engages the older reader in a story from beginning to end. This is an example of that dog, stray dog, beaten dog, boy finds dog, wants to take him home, mom says no, what is gonna happen next? <laughs> Boy hides dog under bed, what is gonna happen? So we're getting the kids engaged in a real story that continues over 12 books. And, and this totally changes the kids' attitude towards reading. Beforehand, reading's not for me. Now suddenly, what's gonna happen next? Mm -hmm. And often um, the kids, we've heard uh, some teachers, uh, come back to us and say, uh, particularly with a fantasy series, which are so cool, that kids have asked to stay in a playtime to read these books because first they're engaging, but also they're cool. Every every kid likes a story about a stray dog uh, or a fantasy, as I, I will show you in a minute. So this is really important from the point of view of the concept of re-engaging is actually getting the kids hooked into a good storyline and very engaging illustrations while this text is controlled, but growing uh, incrementally in difficulty as you teach your phonics. So this is really the secret of the way we've structured the series. And we have... Can Sorry. I interrupt? I just want to say yeah. for those of people that might have uh, just come in fairly recently, this is kind of, Tammy just summed up the mess, the main take home for today, besides getting these fabulous books, is if you have older readers who are struggling, finding a, a book that's a high interest is not sufficient. You need to find a book that's high interest, relevant to their 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 age and their their curiosities and then also marry it with the skills that they need in a sequential order and phonic books does that beautifully you can see that they're high interest but also they're going to be building knowledge systematically filling up the gaps that the kids didn't get with as beginners so just wanted to reiterate that that's the that's a take home don't leave home uh without that insight from today okay you guys so tammy go ahead take it take it away so the the nice thing about the series uh as as you go up um further up our, our range you actually start to have choices of series that have the same phonic sequence and that is a huge advantage. One is because you can ask the child, which series would you like to read? Do you like fantasy or do you like a, a book about a, a, a dog? Most boys would choose fantasy, but some girls don't like to shapeshift. They might choose 
a, a story about a dog or or some kids love dogs they they might want to, um, to read a, a story about dog the great thing for you as a teacher is that you have two parallel series Amazing. which means you can get double the amount of reading practice mm -hmm. so sometimes in my lessons I would read one series in the lesson and send one series home brilliant uh, or if the, the progress was, was slow and I wanted to stay on this level for a bit longer, I could read one series after another. Remember, we also have workbooks that have multiple uh, experiences of, of, of uh, comprehension activities. So you can really revisit and consolidate the learning at every level. This series, Magic Belt and that dog series, start at CVC. Uh, so it's assuming that the kids already can read CVC words and have all the sounds of the alphabet pretty well secured. Um, you can see here that, that we do a lot of uh, practice of uh, consonant blends, which would go beautifully with Marnie's uh, switch it activities, often because many of our struggling readers really stumble over those uh, uh, consonant blends. Then we introduce the suffix ed, and then the word gets a bit longer, which is really quite difficult for many uh, for many kids. The ccvcc words like trust or print, and then we introduce the uh, consonant um, digraphs sh, ch, s, k, qua, ng, w, suffix ing, and u. So that is the the uh, phonic sequence of both the Magic Belt series and that dog series. Now, at the moment, I have a brand new student that I'm uh, teaching on uh, on Zoom because, of course, all our lessons have gone uh, on to Zoom. And she's actually chosen the fantasy series. And what I do is I post these for her in the post, both books. So she has a lot of reading to do of just that one book, which focuses on the CVC and moving to C CVCC level. So if you can see, one series has got slightly more text than the other but you will see that the words are very controlled so you'll have the word the word asks which is consonant blends in in the fantasy series the magic belt and on the other hand you'll have words like pats and fond uh, and dogs uh, in the that dog you can see that the, mm -hmm. the word level is very very controlled mm -hmm. And uh, let, me, that, let me interrupt, uh, Tammy, we've got this yeah. question from Jolene. Do either of you have any thoughts about teaching reading using a screen versus a paper copy of a book? During these COVID times, I'm not allowed to give students actual books and it worries me. Do you know any uh, research about this? So um, it is uh, something that people all over the world are dealing with right now, Jolene. So you're not alone. I'm sure you know that. And my thought is we have to make do and do the best we can. And if we can sometimes give some things to, that parents, could, we can either send it in the mail or parents can print out so that sometimes they're reading on paper, it's probably better. But a lot of the times we won't be able to do that. Um, I know with the Reading Simplified Academy resources, they're digital and you can one can do that. Um, there is a little research that su suggests that students pay more attention and, and attend more to real books as opposed to electronic books. But it's not, a, it's not such a huge di difference that we need to uh, to panic about it, and especially in these COVID days. And this, Lord willing, won't last forever. So uh, so Jennifer asked a related, really t timely question. Is there a digital version? I know you guys have at least some of them. Well, um, we actually haven't got around to digitizing all our books. We are, we're wrestling with this uh, issue. We have made 10 free digital books as part of the Moon Dogs, <laughs> and you can find them on the phonicbooks.com website. They are free PDFs to download, and each one of them uh, deals with um, four or five alternative uh, spellings for long vowel sounds. So you have those free, um, and do go download them. And they're um, related to COVID, right? They're all, they're called at home series, and they're all stories about at home activities assume you know basically because we were in lockdown they were created while we were in lockdown in london and the whole of the uk <laughs> and we wanted to make some uh, resources that parents and teachers could use online um having said that some teachers are saying that they use these kind of machines to reflect um to kind of show the the book so they buy the books in paper and they kind of uh um they basically uh i don't know how you screen them on the screen yeah yeah um, they're particularly doing that in classrooms uh, when they want to show the whole book on onto the screen. 
Um, I mean, we will at some point digitize the books, but we're not there yet, I'm afraid. So next two series I wanted to show you is called the Totem Series and Alba. And um, again, this is a more of a kind of catch up, whiz through all the things we know, but are not quite secure. So they start exactly where the previous series, Magic Belt and um, uh, That Dog series start, but they kind of whiz through the consonant um, diagraphs and, and go into the extended code, the more difficult long vowels. Mm -hmm. So there's, this is specifically for kids who know, but it's not very secure. So you have to go through it very quickly because we all know these kids haven't got time. We can't take time. They need to progress and it needs to happen quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to make sure we know where they are, but we don't want to, to, to waste time on things they don't need to be doing. So this series kind of basically checks through uh, what we would call the initial code, the easy part of the code. Uh, then we call the basic code consonants, sh short vowels and consonant diagram. Exactly. It whizzes through that and then introduces some alternative spellings for long vowels, ALBA and TOTEM. Now, mm -hmm. I just want to say something about ALBA. We, uh, as we kind of went to lots of exhibitions, we go to the IDA every year, and now we've gone to the Reading League, a lot of teachers are saying we need books for girls too, because, of course, uh, the myth that dyslexia is only a, a girl, a boy thing has been uh, basically... Um, <laughs> proven wrong. Uh, and so we wanted to have some very strong girl heroines. We have two series, Alba and Rescue, I'll just about to show you uh, coming down, that we have girl heroines. In fact, boys like to read the series too, because these are not books about um, sleepovers and painting nails. They are about <laughs> action and about, um, about, you know, life and death situations and heroines and uh, lots of, um, of action-packed um, excitement so we wanted our girls too to feel empowered and this is what we've done with two series with the heroine being a girl so if you have students who come basically with a very secure initial code where you have the sounds of the alphabet the um consonant blends constant digraphs solid secure but what they need is actually to start with the long vowels and the alternative spellings this is where you might want to start if they can handle four or five alternatives, the way that Marnie teaches it, right? If they can't handle four or five alternatives, then you might want to go back to the two alternatives and the moon dogs. Just introduce the two alternatives. Do you remember back? Um, that's it. Uh, that's it. Two alternatives. And then you go to the, uh, the, the series. Here we have Talisman, an exciting fantasy series. Rescue, another exciting series with a heroine. And our newest series is Island, Advent Island Adventure, which is a series uh, which is kind of all in nature and it's got a slightly ecological um, uh, theme to it, which is really nice, very, very up to date from the point of view of the environment, turtles and saving wildlife, etc. cetera. Um, so the great thing about it, this stage is you have now three different series you can choose from. Mm -hmm. your, your student can say, well, I like fantasy and I'm gonna stick with fantasy or I, I want to read about uh, a girl that gets shrunk to be as tiny as a tin can, or I want to read about the environment because I love animals. This empowers our students if they can make a choice. And of course, in your back pocket, you could keep the fact that you're gonna use another series just to make sure they have more reading at the same level. Mm -hmm. So if we go on, we can see the, the level of the text. Oh, very important. Um, a lot of the criticism that has been uh, um, uh, that has attacked decodable books is that decodable books dumb down in language. And actually what can happen is in many ways, decodable books can introduce language that the kids haven't encountered before. So we make a point of teaching vocabulary as we go along. So for example, this is a book where the word fantastic, gaze, exclaim, and mock mm. are introduced. And all these words are words that the kids can decode. So we're combining the decoding Mm -hmm. and the comprehension with learning vocabulary. So every book will have a vocabulary page with the definitions there for the kid to learn and for, of course, for uh, the teacher and parent to go over again. I love that. The other thing that is really quite uh, special about the books is we have a reading practice uh, page. 
that fits very well to the sorting activities that I've seen on Reading Simplified. This introduces the alternative spellings. Um, it You can practice reading that before you start the book or the, the child can read that with their parents. Um, of course, you can see there are quite a few alternatives. So you have to decide if, if your student is ready for reading a book with so many alternatives. And that's why I talked about introducing two alternatives first and then um, introducing the, the remainder. But this is a lovely feature because it really focuses your mind as a teacher on this book is about A, and I need to make sure that my student can read all these words before reading this decodable book. Mm -hmm. So this is an example from uh, the, the, the two of the texts. This is, for example, the uh, Val Teams A. You can see there's not too much text, so it's not very daunting. Now these books have got 16 pages in them, so it's a proper little book. Kids get really caught up because they're very exciting. As you can see, there's a troll, and here uh, you can see that um, uh, Erin is about to shrink herself to a tiny little girl, and then she has to kind of fight the whole universe from the size of being a, a tiny little Thumbelina. Um, so very engaging and very um, thoughtfully illustrated to engage this this group of children that could be very turned switched off from reading because the text they're giving to read is is, is not really engaging them. So uh, keeping uh, going on, this is an example of um, the sound O on the right. This is a, a picture from Rescue. You can see beautiful illustrations. And if you look at the text carefully, you'll find examples of O, rainbow, shoal, floated. Again, words, vocabulary, shoal um, in, 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 on the right. Um, and you have yellow and followed. And if you go on the left, you'll see words like this is E, heels and screamed and pleased and pleaded. And as we say, we don't dumb down the vocabulary. We try to develop it as we go along. And, and kids take well to it. There's no reason why they can't learn new words. And this is doing them a great service because, of course, many of these kids who haven't done a lot of reading, their vocabulary is low and they need to build it up or else they will not comprehend. Even, they can, even if they can decode, they won't comprehend unless they have the vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Megan says she's looking through the site now and I all caps I need all the books <laughs> so make sure you get the discount code we're going to share with you soon and Brandy says she loves a mystery adventure and interest level of the text that's so important for our older readers because they're so discouraged so we need to give them books that are really cool but also teach them something specific that they're lacking not just general words but very targeted and controlled so just go on example, another example of er and I, you can see the kind of uh, uh, the, uh, the adventure, uh, island adventure is very uh, linked to turtles and to uh, environmental um, uh, environmental theme. But I do love this picture on the left of this tiny little Erin on the huge rabbit. Once she's shrunk herself, she's actually looking for her brother who's disappeared. And uh, he's also shrunk himself. And she's actually have to go and find him um, and so it's a beautiful illustration, which is a kind of little bit based on the borrowers. I don't know if you guys know the story of the borrowers about little tiny little family of mm -hmm. tiny people mm -hmm. uh, braving the big world. So um, that's an example. So now we've gone beyond these uh, first series and we continue to more demanding decodables. As you can see, the amount of text is I growing remember. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is the Titan's Gauntlets. Um, if you remember, um, I mentioned my son, Adam, who is dyslexic and actually str struggled with his schooling throughout. And believe it or not, today he is engaged in writing narrative stories for video games. <laughs> if you see his name here, he was the one who wrote this book um, together with Claire, my colleague. Um, and uh, so his ideas, uh, these are his ideas, because I went to him and I said, look, I need some good ideas to engage 10 year old disaffected readers and he said i'll give it to you <laughs> and he ended up writing with the help of uh the phonics that we helped him uh we we helped him control the language mm -hmm. but the language is getting quite rich mm -hmm. um, and if you can see there are words like futile in it this mm -hmm. focuses on the sound you right uh, and you'll find words like futile and uh stupid, of course, which is our, you'll have words like dislodged. These are quite sophisticated words. No reason why kids can't learn them, 
particularly if their content is embedded, that the words are embedded in, in engaging and motivating um, text. The thing about reading is we want to motivate our kids to learn. If you're not motivated, if you're if you're switched off, it's really difficult to get those, those that, that, that energy into learning, particularly if it's hard for you. So we really put effort into motivating our, our readers, even if the text gets more difficult. And there's another series, Talisman 2, again, uh, more difficult language. You've got the word like furious, despair, um, lots of wonderful language that you can immerse the children in uh, as they are. Uh, uh, this is the second Talisman, when, um, the sequel, which kids love. And we've always got kids writing us, telling us, why on why not they didn't like the second series and what we should do with the third series because they're so engaged in in the story so um oh and this is the last uh of our series uh, of our uh series um for older struggling readers and it's called amber guardians and as you can see here we've tried to grow the text so that we develop reading stamina so some page will have half a page of text but some pages will have a whole page of text. The reason for that is that kids mustn't get stuck on feeling comfortable if just having, you know, six, seven lines of text. They need to get to the stage where they're happy with a whole page of text. And so we've kind of interspersed these throughout the book. Um, the, the focus from the point of view of the teaching in this book actually goes beyond phonics and starts to touch upon morphology. So if you see the workbook, because of course, what comes next after that is starting to teach children about prefixes, suffixes, base and root words, really important for their spelling and reading. So now about the workbooks. The workbooks have been made with a lot of love because of course, this is what we use to teach. We are practicing teachers and we use these resources to teach ourselves. I'm looking for mine, keep going. So um, it's very clear and I'm sure that as interventionist teachers, you all know um, that we need to do stuff, to teach stuff before the reading of the book is a successful experience. And the last thing we want to do is an unsuccessful experience because these kids have suffered a great deal of failure already. Mm -hmm. So before I would use the books, I'd made sure I'd do some word building, I'd do some phony manipulation, similar to switch it activities that Marnie teaches. I would do reading and spelling together in the same way that you've seen Marnie, Marnie do in her lessons. Read it and write it and write it together and uh, for some kids you might want to extend that to captions because if they're very insecure they kind of look more comfortable working with captions before they actually go into mm -hmm. lines of text mm -hmm. this is all this re re uh, relates to everything with the older readers i would always do sorting activities when it's about when it's when i'm teaching long vowels yes it's very very similar to the way that marnie teaches yeah. because that sets the scene that sets the context the mindset of we are now going to read a book with multiple spellings that we've already learned about uh and this is what i teach with the older more advanced readers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's all goes before reading the book mm -hmm. now, i just wanted to show you the kind of activity so you have word building similar to the way that marnie teaches. we call build it mm -hmm. right and you can see the lines we come from the same camp the un underline the way you have the cards on top the way you put the cards in the order sound to spelling same mm -hmm. principles. And then we love the idea of actually teaching reading and spelling together. And this is a fun activity that you could actually use on Zoom if you kind of do a, what you call it, a, a photo, a, um, I kind of snip it. Um, if you photograph it and, and Zoom it, then um, one side, the kid has to, uh, the, the, the student has to read all the words. This is a, a VCC activity. And then uh, you can check if they can read it correctly. Then you can hide it. And then the other side, you have to dictate the words and they have to put the sounds on the lines. The lines are used as scaffolding in the same way that Marnie teaches it uh, because we come from sound to letter and the lines help them to place the sound. This is activity that look very familiar. It's like you'll switch it, but we have it also in our, in our, um, in our workbooks, uh, we don't need to say a lot about it because you guys already know a lot about Switch It and about the importance of phony manipulation, manipulation for both reading and spelling. Right? Mm -hmm. This really, for this activity Switch It as you do it, really um, dislodges those letters that are stuck together 
-hmm. in, in kids' heads, particularly if they've been taught with onset and rhyme previously uh, and they've got two letters stuck together or, or letters which are missing. And let me just interject, we are doing a special event next week all about Switch It, this activity that she's got right here, they call it phony manipulation or playing with sounds. So um, if you want, if you haven't done Switch It before, uh, it's a huge activity, both Tammy and her colleagues and I uh, depend on it and we're hosting event to teach you about it. So you can join us there for that. But just as an aside, if you don't know about that, we're pushing that because it's a really great activity for people all over the world. Teachers and parents use that. But go on teaching us about your, your workbooks. This is good So stuff. here, this is, for example, very good for, for very, very beginner readers who are very insecure. Just read a caption, match it to the picture. But also, you can do a dictation with that same caption. And then you can get the, 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 the learner themselves to check it. So you can hide pen and ink then they have to put it on the line, then you can show it, did they get it right? And the great thing about it is because it's got so much scaffolding, you're, you're, you're continuously growing success. The kids see they can do it and they're willing to try more. And that's how you kind of change their whole approach towards what they can do and how they see themselves both as readers and scholars. Um, so those are examples of what comes before. Now, after reading, we need to use the material we have as much as possible for repetition and consolidation. Uh, we, we'd really need to go over again, again and again. I recently listened to a, um, a podcast by Jennifer Buckingham of, of, of Multilate in Australia, and she was saying how you should really read a text four times in order to develop reading fluency. So that's very difficult to get a kid to to read something four times. So the, the trick is to do it in many different ways. And mm -hmm. that's what we've done. So I'll show you an example, for example. So we have comprehension, vocabulary. This is comprehension, for example. Um, and you can see it doesn't entail writing because so many times I've tried to do comprehension activities with struggling, struggling readers. And they basically, uh, basically have, uh, they, 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 they stop wanting to cooperate because they get hung up on their handwriting, their punctuation, their letter formation, the spelling gets all entangled and all you want them to do is to read and understand. So we've taken out all those elements which are so frustrating. Of course, you do need to teach handwriting and you do need to teach spelling, but at the moment we're just focusing on getting them to read and so we've taken out those elements of frustration and they love these activities. Um, Vocabulary, we've talked about that. Great opportunity to expand vocabulary. Why not? These kids are engaged. Teach. Let's teach them in interesting and new words. So you have some vocabulary work that follows the reading of the book. This so they're idea. reading the same words again in different forms. So that's yeah. where you're sneaking in the rereading and also exactly. building vocabulary and comprehension. Exactly. Very clever. Yeah. So that's exactly, that's, uh, that's vocabulary work. This is a, a matching activity when you match the two pieces. In fact, what I do when I teach Zoom, I just type this up in two text boxes and mix them around. The kids have to match the text boxes. So you can use this content for, for Zoom lessons too. And then of course, punctuation is interesting because punctuation in fact is a comprehension activity. Um, you can't know where to put the full stop if you don't understand the sentence. And so it's a great way to yet again, revisit the text but this time, look at your punctuation. Where does the full stop? Where does the capital letter, the uh, the, the period, as, as you could say in America, the period and the capital letter go? And so it's a great uh, way to get kids to read text at the level uh, with revisiting the same words again and again. And here we come to reading fluency, which is really, really important. We know that reading fluency is uh, accuracy. And we've been working on accuracy the whole time. We know its rate and we know it's expression. So this is an opportunity to bring in the expression. So what I usually do is I ask the kids to read it first time and they kind of decode it and second time to read it with expression. So I'm getting my full money's worth of getting back to the text again and again, the same word, the same story, but this, but with a purpose. And so uh, sometimes I even record them on my phone so they can listen to themselves back again. We have to find lots of ways to attack the same words, read the same text to get fluent. So that's an example. Uh, and then of course we have a game. This is a kind of snakes and ladders game with the act with the um, characters from the story to finish the um, the, the lesson. 
uh, if you want to. Again, this is a, a, v, a VCC uh, level of, of story of, of game, but really a good idea to use. And again, I can use this on Zoom by simply moving the counter uh, along. I can basically photograph this and 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 make a JPEG and and move the characters along and get a spinning dice on on the computer. Mm -hmm. so, uh, here's an example of one of their workbooks. They're just uh, they're spiral bound. So that makes it really easy to uh, copy <laughs> on the printer. And here's an example. So you have like with book book five, say that she's showing examples like from multiple activities all from one book. So each book is tied, has pages that go along with it to keep re the reinforcement of the reading, the writing, the vocabulary, the fluency, and the comprehension. And so it's so handy. And just like Reading Simplified, it's sorted by sound. For, particularly for uh, at least the uh, the alternative spellings or the what we call the advanced code. So. so so every workbook is divided into chapters. The chapters correlate to the book. So you're going to have 12 chapters if the series has 12 books or 10 chapter if the series has 10 books. It's really easy to work with. Mm -hmm. So when you talked about whether you don't need an instructional manual because it's all self-explanatory, no need to sit and spend more time you simply have to read the instructions at the bottom of every activity at the bottom of every page and you will know what to do with your student. Great activities to photograph on Zoom. Oh, that's that's, for example, sorting activities that very similar to what um, Marnie does. So I take these words, for example, and put them on Zoom and get the kids to move the words around. Um, and yeah. she's got directions right there. So, boom, you know what to do. Off to the races. <laughs> that's right. Ooh, There's um, only one more thing that I wanted to mention is um, that we have uh, some really fun card games. I know that it's not a particularly COVID friendly activity right now, but these are um, a great uh, activity that I've not only kids love of all ages, I've even found some of the most reluctant kids to have an assessment using them because they're so structured. I've actually used them for an assessment, a kid who would not sit down for assessment. He was so stressed. I sat down and we played a game and I observed how he was reading his CVC words. I observed if he had his medial vowels, his short vowels. So um, such a fun game that you can actually use them to sneak a little, a little assessment um, while you're playing it. You play them like Unos, but they're very, very exciting because they have the characters and the monsters and the talisman and they kind of look kind of old worldy um uh, and exciting so we different have the, sets, 12 sets right here right 12 or 10 different you sets have a, of card games for that's each. right that you have 20 in total because the next slide you have the next ones and so you can see they cover um almost all of the most of the phonic code uh not alphabetic code not not everything but a lot of it a lot of the stuff and a, a lot of the stuff and you know what Marnie this would go very well with your lessons because you just would have to take the e long e vowel lesson mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that right. you teach and play the game with that it just consolidates the skill exactly would you like future complimentary trainings like this here at Reading Simplified? Then make sure you ring the bell here at YouTube to become a subscriber so that you learn more of our ways of streamlining instruction and accelerating students' reading achievement. And you can also find us on Facebook at Reading Simplified, usually on Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We go live with other complimentary trainings and we give away some freebies for teachers and parents. So I hope to see you here again next time on YouTube or even on Facebook. Take care.